Beth from Sky, can we take you first? I can see you arrive safely. Just about got here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Keir Starmer, at a time when people are struggling to pay their bills, feed their families and are striking over pay settlements, you've produced a 155-page report talking about devolution, constitutional reform and abolishing the House of Lords. This might look to many people as completely out of touch. And you could look like another politician talking to Westminster about stuff that might never come to pass. Can you give me one thing in this report that would improve people's lives from day one of a Labour government? And if I may, to, to Gordon Brown, uh, Nicola Sturgeon has declared the next election a de facto independence referendum. You talk about further devolution, but hasn't the horse already bolted? And do you accept that Scotland could become an independent nation in your lifetime or mine? Thank you. Uh, Beth, the complete opposite of the proposition you put to me. This is vitally important. If we ask ourselves in this room across the country what is the single biggest thing that's holding us back, it's failure of economic growth over the last 12 years. I profoundly believe that amongst the causes for that is because we have not allowed and empowered every part of our country to play its part in building our economy. We've, allowed, we've relied far too much on London and the South East. We have not let the whole country play its part. This addresses that question. And I can tell you, wherever I am across the country, whether it's Burnley, Hull, Blackpool, Stirling, Sunderland, Southampton, Everybody I meet, and so do my shadow cabinet, they meet communities and businesses and people that say, we've got ideas, we've got innovation, we want our community and our place to be even better than it is. We just need a government that shares our ambition, shares our vision for the future. So this could not be more relevant. And, you know, I'm fed up to the back teeth with sticking plasters for the problems that we've got. The underlying problem is our economy isn't working. This is a strong, compelling set of recommendations that do what politicians have all agreed needs to be done, but nobody's actually done it, which is to be bold enough to say, We've got to stop those in Westminster and Whitehall pretending that they know best about the communities that desperately want to play their part in the future. We're going to transfer that power to them, rebuild our economy. And I don't think this is the complete opposite of a discussion in Westminster. It's accepting that Westminster is not the place for those decisions to be made. They've got to be made elsewhere. Gordon, can I bring you in on the second element of yep. that? Just as in 2016, a lot of people voted for Brexit because they thought that was their only chance of change. In 2014, a lot of people voted for independence because they thought that was the only change on offer. We are changing that entirely today. We are breaking new ground. The ground on which the battle is fought in Scotland is changing forever. Because what we are saying is we are offering change within the UK that will benefit Scotland as against change by leaving the United Kingdom, which we think will do damage to Scotland. And that's going to be the debate from now on in. Not change, uh, not independence versus the status quo, but change within Britain versus change by leaving Britain. And the measures, of course, we're putting forward to give uh, more uh, power uh, to Scotland uh, and to Wales and to the regions and localities and communities of England all go hand in hand and are in the same direction uh, together. So when you come to the next election, it may be that the Scottish National Party will have a, a one-line manifesto and want a one-issue general election, but I tell you this, we have done a huge amount of research on Scottish public opinion and people want a better health service immediately, people want living standards improved immediately, people want jobs for young people immediately, people want better housing immediately, and people of course want change in the way that we are suggesting immediately, and that's going to be the issue on which we, fought, we fight. We are offering a plan for economic, social political and constitutional reform, not a one-issue election. Thank you. Mr Starmer, so just if I may be a bit cheeky and ask us a quick follow-up. I asked you one, which policy in this report from day one will change people's lives because it's so amorphous. What's the one thing that you're going to do, the most important thing in that report that will change all of our lives? Evolving power in relation to skills, education, transport, resources 
finances into our local communities so that they can help us grow the economy. There are so many examples of this. You've got um, video games in Dundee, you've got ceramics in the Midlands, you've got um, creative media in Bristol and Bath. Um, hydrogen could be um, what the North East revitalises around. There are so many examples. I think we've got 288 economic clusters. If we were able to transfer power in this way and get those clusters to operate, it would bring about a huge change um, everywhere, including here um, in Leeds. That would, if we were to turn around our economy or begin to turn around our economy, it would have a massive change. All these issues about the cost of living and the strikes, all the things you ask us every day, have one common cause, and that is our economy is not working for everyone in this country. It is the mission of the next Labour government not only to fight the election on that issue, to win it and to bring about the change that we desperately, desperately need in this country.